Earlier this season, I was lucky enough to snorkel the incredible Coogee Maritime Trail, exploring its unique marine habitat and the amazing Omeo Wreck. Now, I've always loved shipwrecks, but it's a bit too cold to be going diving today. Which is why I'm so excited with my destination here today. I'm in Frio. This is the WA Shipwrecks Museum. It is truly remarkable. Every West Aussie should visit this at least once. The marine archaeology in here is just something we've all got to see. It tells so much about our history, so let's check it out. Located on Wajuk Noongar land, the buildings themselves are historic. The museum is housed inside the Fremantle Commiserate buildings. These were amongst the first buildings built here in WA by convict labour. Start your exploration here in the entrance gallery, where you can find artefacts from a number of wrecks, including the cannon from Australia's earliest known shipwreck, the Trial, wrecked on Ritchie's Reef in 1622. The vessel was discovered in 1969. The centrepiece of this museum is undoubtedly the Batavia Gallery, where you can find the reconstructed remains of Australia's second oldest shipwreck, the Batavia. Uh, what we're looking at here is the stern section of the Batavia, which wrecked on the 4th of June in 1629 off the Houtman of Brolis. And this is what remains of a, a very, very big ship, just a tiny little portion that was that survived because it was buried beneath the sand and that excluded all the oxygen, keeping it in one piece. Elements of the display that we're seeing in around here really tell parts of, well, I suppose, what was on the ship, but also what happened afterwards. Yeah, so it was a, a well-known mutiny. Mm -hmm. It was a very famous in the 17th century, uh, but we're still working on that story today. Um, I've been more involved in the last 20 years looking at sites on the on the land. So in the Hartman Brolis in the Wallaby Group, there's a number of sites. One. Beacon Island, which is formerly known as Batavia's Graveyard. We've been conducting excavations there for nearly two decades. The artefacts here are remarkable. Often we don't know the amount of background work that goes into processing a recovered item. Before any piece makes it to the museum, it passes through the materials conservators. So basically the artefacts are recovered by maybe the Maritime Archaeology Department mm. and they're brought back to the Materials Conservation Department and they're kept wet. We always have to keep the objects wet at all times so and that minimises cracking and drying out and warping and corrosion of metals as well. So when they come back here we separate them into their different material types because every material type has a different chemical treatment that has to be applied. And then we have to start removing the salts from all the objects because if something's been underwater for 300 years, it's got 300 years worth of salt in them. So we have to get that out before we can start the treatment. So how did you do that with this enormous you know, part of the hull here? Basically the hull, the timbers were actually placed in really large vats and we put water in them, just normal water, and so the salts come out into the water. So when the salt um, concentration in the timber is equal to the salt concentration in the surrounding water, the chloride will plateau, we change the water and then it will start coming out again. Australia's Dutch explorers feature heavily throughout the museum with the Hartog de Flaming Gallery showing a hundred years worth of charts and history from these intrepid explorers. If you're looking for something more in depth, the Dutch Rex Gallery is home to silver, lace, pottery, amongst the many artefacts recovered from a number of different wrecks. The WA Shipwrecks Museum is open from 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And for any history buffs out there, I cannot recommend this enough. For more information, make sure to head to our website.